a miracle, a miracle today. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Destiny changer, you are a destiny. Come on, say.
It is my heart to serve that I be close to you, God. Only you will help me know you. Father God, we bless you, Lord. Jehovah God, we adore you, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, O oh God. Oh, oh, oh. We worship you, Lord. We exalt you, King of Kings. you want to be close to him raise your voice and worship him Run me in your eyes. 
Protected, oh God, in your arms I feel safe, oh God, in your arms, oh God, I feel protected, oh God, wrap me, God, that I may feel you, Jehovah God, Jehovah God, we need you, oh God, may you move in our life, King of Kings, my loving God, I worship you, God. To that place, who is merciful and gracious. to the secret place, show me how to be as gracious as you are, Lord. Oh God, He knew there is joy. You can make me like you, Lord, by touching my life, oh God. By raising me up, oh God, hallelujah. <laughs> you can make me light, you Lord. Hold me, God, hold me, God. Surround me in your arms, oh God. Run me in your arms, oh, run me in your arms. Let's sing it to God with all our heart. Come on. Run me in your arms, oh, oh, oh. Run me in your arms. And I may feel you, Lord. Run me in your arms. Oh God in your arms as we say There is healing that is taking place right now. Amen. Father, thank you for your presence, oh Lord. <laughs> oh God. Take me to the place, oh God. A place of change. Oh God. Jehovah God, we love you. We exalt your name, King of Kings. We say thank you, Lord, because of your presence in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, let's praise him. 
Do you believe that? Let's go. Jesus, you're my found foundation. Come on. I know I can stand secure. Every time I lift your voice and say, Jesus, you're my found foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. Come on. I put my hope in your holy word. Sing it again, Jesus. Jesus, you're my found foundation. You will learn. Yeah? <laughs> Say, we, let me teach you a bit. Huh? Say, we praise you, mighty God. We praise you, holy God. Your name, oh great, I am higher than other name. You can read. We praise you, mighty God. 
We praise you, holy God. Your name, oh great, I am. I have an agony. You are good. Let's go. We praise you. We praise you, my regard. And you, holy God. Your name, oh great, I am. I have an agony. Listen, another part. No other name as big as yours. No other way but you, oh Lord. So, uh -huh. let's go. No other, no other name as big, eh? Let's go. No other name, go. No other name as big as no other way but you, oh Lord. Come again, no other name. No other name as big as yours. Mighty hand, Jesus, Jesus, we pray. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let's go. Clap and let's go. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Woo! Come on, let me in. Come on, let's pray, Zima. Come on, my man. Uh huh. Ongeza yo sauti buana. Iyo best to ski. Ongeza kat. Yes. He big to ski then. Come on. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, holy God. Your name, oh great I am.
Wangapi walicheza twist hapa? Hebu nione kina nani walicheza twist. Eh, si mlicheza? Come on, let me see you out here. Say, say. Come, let's go, let's go. you come back to Africa. Eh? The other day I said I'm an African. Sindio? Mbona tusao vitu zetu? Our own. Vitu zetu. Mbona? There is power in Africa. Amen. Let's prove it today. Amen. Come on. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, come. Hey! I am an only scared Bizuri. We are scared Bizuri, eh? Give a monitor. Come on! Somebody praise the Lord! Eh? Woo! If you believe this, shout out to the Lord! I bet them a boko, I bet them a boko, I bet them a boko, 
Ali tena mambo makubwa wala damu wa endelevu tena tenda 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 e baba tenda yo 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 tenda e baba Oh, 
kufanikisha mtu avandisha motonyoso na tango na ye yani uwa anawafanikisha na kuinua watu kila mtu na wakati wake <tos> siyayo ni maneno mazuri yao unajua hatuwezi hatuwezi tuwa tuwa wakosea hatuwezi leta vitu ambazo mimi za kuwa kuangamiza fana before we sing for you what, tunakachi ni tunasiki hii inafaa hii inafaa sindio na uinuliwe basi. Amen. Samani nime hii wiki tumekuwa na kazi muda baada nasikia throat ime. Anyway, for the glory of God. Father we honor your name Jesus. Father we magnify you King of Kings Adonai. I bless you Jehovah God. Hey 
Worship him. Talk to your father right now. Talk to your father is in this place. Now talk to him. You can't be silent in his presence. Talk to him right now. Talk to him. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and give him the praise. Come and worship Jesus. He's been good to you. He's been gracious to you. The Lord has been merciful. Worship him magnify his holy name in this place give him all the glory give him all the honor hallelujah I appreciate the Lord your God the Lord has been good the Lord has been merciful give him the praise today give him the glory today give him the honor today he is the Lord God Almighty he is worthy of all praise worthy of all glory Father, we worship and exalt you. We magnify and glorify your name. You are good. You are good. There is none like unto you, Jesus. We worship you from the depth of our hearts this morning. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the adoration. There is none like unto you, O oh God. We lift you up with our praise. We lift you up with our worship, mighty God. Take your rightful place in our hearts this morning. Reign supreme from everlasting to everlasting. We bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on church, lift up your voice. Appreciate the Lord your God. Magnify his holy name this morning. You are worthy Lord. You are worthy Jesus. We praise you. We adore and exalt your holy name. Who is like unto you, O God. There is none to compare with you. We magnify and exalt your holy name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your covering. Thank you for the angels that you have given charge of our lives. Thank you, dear God, for shielding us. Thank you for taking care of us. We are doing exalt your holy name. Be lifted up and be exalted. Be magnify your name today. Hallelujah. We worship the King of all kings. We worship the Lord of all lords. We bow down in adoration to you because you are God. Thank you, King of kings. Blessed be your name this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. I want you to shift your focus from anything that is pulling you down. 
and place it unto Jesus this morning. Remove your focus from anything, any challenge, any trouble, and place your focus unto Jesus. He is the author and the finish of your faith. Whatever he began in your life, he will bring to a completion. Father, we thank you today. The Bible says in 1 John 4:4 4, 4, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so we don't need to fear anything this morning. We don't need to be troubled in our minds because he that is in us he is greater than he that is in that challenge. He is greater than he that is in that problem this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the promise that you have given to us, Jesus. That you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so this morning we are assured that even when we go through the waters, we are not alone. You are there with us. Even when we go through the fire, we are not alone. You are there with us, oh God. We thank you that every challenge we face, we are not facing it alone. We are facing it with you on our side. And so this morning, Lord, we refuse to be afraid. We refuse to worry. We refuse to be anxious. We choose to believe. We choose to have faith in you. We choose to trust you this morning, to trust you with our lives, to trust you with our families, to trust you with our businesses, to trust you, dear God, with our children, to trust you with everything, God, that you have placed in our lives. This morning, we make a choice to come to you boldly and with humility, O oh God, believing that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. You are greater than the enemy. You are greater than the powers of darkness. Even though they may sharpen weapons against us, those weapons will not strike the target. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. We stay under the blood this morning. We choose to stay under the blood where we are safe, where we are taken care of, where we are covered. We thank you, mighty God, and we bless your name. And this morning, Father, I pray all the forces that have been gathered together against families this morning, my Father and my God, we now declare them scattered in the name of Jesus, my Father and my God. Every scheme that has been, oh God, hitched, hatched against your people, every scheme that has been hatched against businesses, oh God, of your children, my Father and my God, we rise up against them in the name name of Jesus my Lord and my God every spirit of uh, of depression uh, Lord we rise against it uh, in the mighty name of Jesus we come against every spirit of deceit uh, in Jesus mighty name uh, Lord we choose to put our eyes on you not in our problems uh, not in that storm not in that challenge we put our eyes on you just like Jehoshaphat said, our eyes are on you, O oh God. And we believe that you will see us through every challenge, every battle, and everything that rises against us, Lord. For we are not facing it alone. And so right now I pray that the peace of God that passes all human understanding shall rest on somebody's heart this morning. You came here worried. You came here anxious. Right now the peace of God may flood your heart. May the peace of God flood your heart in the name of Jesus. You came here not knowing what to do. May the Lord direct you. May the Lord give or order your steps to a particular direction. May the Lord open doors that have been closed in your life for too long. In the mighty name of Jesus, because he has the powers to do so. I pray that every storm in your life will now be still. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every storm be still. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Father give you praise and we give you glory and honor Lord we want to lift up this nation to you 
We are grateful that you know what goes on in this land better than anybody can ever know. You know what DCI does not know. You know what the DPP does not know. You know what the other government agencies do not know. Lord, everything is plain and bare before you. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that you will rescue this nation from the tentacles of corruption. In the name of Jesus, rescue us, oh God, from the tentacles of negative ethnicity. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, oh God, that you give courage to those, dear Lord, that have been given the responsibility to an earth, oh God, corruption. Give them courage, oh God, that you may use them, oh Lord, to bring a change in our nation. We want to lift up our leaders, oh God, the president, the deputy, and all the uh, cabinet secretaries, oh God. Give them wisdom. For they cannot lead without your wisdom, Lord. And them wisdom, Father. Father, we pray that peace will prevail in our nation. Those areas where there is conflict, we speak peace. Those areas where there is famine, we speak help right now. Lord, may there be help for those people. May there be help, oh God. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a good hand this morning. Give the Lord a good hand. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We magnify your name. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Why don't you turn around, just greet one or two people. Tell them it's good to, to see you, good to sit next to you or stand next to you. And you may have your seats. This morning I want to remind us of what happened on the cross. When Jesus died, he chose to die. He took up the sin, the shame, and the pain, and even death. So we can have life and have it in abundance. Amen. May God bless you as I sing. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Oh, your salvation. Yeah, yeah. You broke the chains of sin. You gave us victory. You let the captives free. You took the yoke of sin, held out liberty to leave her sands of thee. The Oh, Father and the Bride, to pay atonement price. You left your throne of grace, took up our earthly frame, to bear our sin and shame. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Baba, oh, Baba, oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you took up the shame and the pain so I can have life in abundance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. You sought God's recompense, though the world could not tell that you are Emmanuel. Behold God's mystery, the light that gives my sight of Father's love and might. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, for taking up my place on that cross, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, oh, yeah. Baba, oh, 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 Baba, oh, Baba, oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I will never know the pain you went through on that cross. For you took my place. You took my place. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Emmanuel. Oh, oh. oh thank you, Lord. I don't know, King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You're worthy of all praise. Mighty in your power. All gracious and merciful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the highest praying, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Merciful and mighty. Gracious. You are king of kings, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Baba, oh, Baba, oh, oh, Baba, oh, 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 We thank you, Lord. We thank Thank you. Amen. Amen. Flora is actually doing her a live recording here on the 31st of March uh, as from 3 p.m. She's doing a live DVD recording and it's free. So we are all invited to be uh, a blessing to her ministry as she does this. And of course, you will also appear in the videos. So when you come, um, come dressed nicely and with a nice smile. And let's be a blessing to, uh, to her ministry. Amen. Amen. I want to invite the children to come uh, so that we can release them to class as the, the teachers prepare also to minister to them. So all children who are 12 years and below, uh, please uh, come.
Jesus loves me. Yes, I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know the song? Okay, let's sing. He belongs there we and he is Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So as we pray for children, we're also going to pray for Bishop T. Uh, Bishop T is, uh, is just left. He's going to minister in uh, one of the churches here in town, Tononoka Church of God. He's been doing a conference that began on Monday and uh, they are finishing today. So I wanted to just whisper a prayer as he ministers this morning and pray that God is going to use him. And as we pray for Tononoka Church of God as a congregation, we're also going to pray for other churches that are gathered this morning that the Lord will also uh, visit with them. Can we do that? Let's believe and pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning. For we are all the body of Christ. Although we meet in different locations, we are your body. And we thank you for the opportunity that you've given to us, especially the Church of Christ, the body of Christ here in Mombasa, to gather, Lord, in different locations. We want to pray more specifically for Church of God, Tononoka, where Bishop is ministering this morning. We ask that your power will visit with them. We ask that your servant will experience your presence as he ministers your word, that it shall come with power and with clarity and with authority. We also pray, Father, for other assemblies that are gathered this morning, especially in this county. We ask, Father, that you will minister to your people in the name of Jesus. But above all, may there be unity in the spirit as we gather all together this day. We thank you for the gift of children. We bless you, Father, that you've blessed us as a family, as church family, with these dear children of God. We pray that as they go to class and as they sit to, to, uh, to hear from your word, to listen from the teachers, Lord, I pray that they will hear your voice. May you speak to them and, and, and help uh, these dear ones, oh God, to be trained and to be taught and to be directed in the way of the Lord. We give you praise and we give you honor. We release them with the blessings of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Children, you can go to class. The Lord bless you and bless you indeed. Amen. You know, the next thing that I'm going to ask, which most people don't like, is that we try to fill the pockets that the children have left. I know not, most, not ma very many people like that uh, because we like our comfort zones and we would want to. But I said the last time as I was standing here and I said that when you move, you know, the videos come out nicely. And somebody will say that, Ile siku, Pastor Imba alikuwa na ubiri, church ilikuwa imeja. And then the glory will, part of the glory will come to me. But I want to request you if you can move and, and uh, fill in the pockets, if you can. It will be a great blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you. So if you see any seat that is uh, before you that you need to fill, please just go ahead and fill it. And I believe that the Lord will bless us together. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Amen. You know, as we move, I, I've just been reminded of a very um, funny joke. You know, it was one afternoon and the pastor came on to, uh, to the pulpit to preach as I have come. And you know, that this brother that was struggling with sleep. And the pastor asked the congregation, if you know you are going to heaven, please stand. And everyone stood and this brother was deep asleep, fast asleep. And you know, as, as good preachers, we try and use all means to ensure that at least everyone is awake. So he tried a joke here and a joke there. It didn't work. So he said, 
all of us were standing, please sit. And everyone was sitting. And you know, as they were sitting, the chairs were moving as it was moving this morning. And that brother who was asleep woke up. And when he woke up, he stood. And he realized that he's the only one who was standing. So um, everyone was laughing at him because the pastor had asked, if you know you are going to hell, please stand. So he found himself standing. And uh, what happened, he told the pastor, Pastor, I may not know what is going on here, but one thing I know, that there are two people who are standing in this room, and that is me and you. <laughs> so he gave the pastor 10 nil. Both of them. So pastor must have, you know, changed the question so that they are both in. But this morning, I want us to turn to the word of God in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6. Matthew chapter 6, from verse number 5. We'll read up to verse number 8. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to verse 8. I will read, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues. And of the street corners to be seen by man. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. But when you pray. Go into your room. Close the door. And pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret. Will reward you. Verse 7. And when you pray. Do not be like. I do not keep on babbling like pagans. For they think they will be heard. Because of their many words. And verse number 8 says, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our father, we are humble to sit at your feet this morning and to feed from your word. It is a privilege to gather together in your presence. And it's a privilege to hear your word. And father, I count it as a, a great privilege and honor to even stand before these saints this morning i pray that you use me father may i decrease as you increase in me may your word lord be heard from this pulpit may your word speak to us in jesus name we pray amen we also want to appreciate those who are joining us uh, on facebook live and we bless the lord for them now we'd like to share with us this morning on the subject of prayer but we will take a slightly different look at this subject. And our title, or the title of our, our message this morning, is in form of a question. And the question is, why pray if God already knows? Why pray if God already knows? Now, talking about knowing or having knowledge, I am reminded of a very uh, interesting story and this is a true story, something that happened to me almost 19 years ago. That is in the year 2000, if I can remember. Of a lady in our village. She was passing by and uh, it started to rain. So she came into our house to be able to, uh, you know, stay until the rain stopped. So she stayed in our house and uh, the time came now when she was to leave. And you know, my mom, as a good Christian, asked her to pray before she leaves. And of course, she accepted. And she started praying. And as good Christians, we closed our eyes, in fact, tightly. But it got to a point where the lady who was praying suddenly kept quiet. And you can imagine, in a house, you know, the pastor, I mean, the, the pastor who is praying just keeps quiet and it just goes, mom. And it's even unusual and very uncomfortable when the pastor is a stranger to you and she's standing next to you. And that is what was going through me, my mind. So I knew that it was un very unchristian to open my eyes when the prayer, when we have not said the final amen. So I kept on closing my eyes. But inside me, I was wondering, what is this? What is happening? So, uh, I defied the orders and opened my eyes. 
So when I opened my eyes and looked at the lady, I was shocked that she was staring at me, straight at me. And I said, now I've, I've opened my eyes. Watch to end So she started uh, asking me some very interesting questions. The first question was, by then I was just, either I was in class 8 or I just finished class 8. So she started asking me, Kijana, uh, of course she said it in, 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 in my mother tongue, so I'm translating it in Swahili. So she asked me, Kijana, umewai kupoteza kalamu? And I said, I thought about it. And I, I started asking him, I said, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're going to school in a local day primary school, kupoteza kalamu is, is, is a lifestyle. So I thought about it and I said, no. I don't know whether I was lying or whether I was just being uh, tough-headed. So I, say, I, say, I told her no. Then she kept quiet and then she asked me again, have you, have you ever struggled with any umekua, ushawai kuangalia blackboard na una, una toa machozi kwa macho? That one I didn't even think about it. I told her a straight no because I had never gone through that. So she was very disappointed and she told me, no, she told my mom, unfortunately your son has refused to uh, respond to the promptings of the spirit. So she finished her prayer and left. Now, the thing is, eh, this woman was trying to show me how much she knows through, quote-unquote, the spirit about me. And seemingly, I refused to obey the prophecy. Now, the God that we serve, the Bible tells us that he is all-knowing. God knows everything about us. Now, this subject of prayer that I am presenting to us this morning, I will address it in two broad areas. One, I will present to us the truth about God being the all-knowing God. And then the second part will be to answer, try and answer from the scripture this question, then if God knows, why then should we pray? Praise the name of the Lord. So, I invite you to join me in the exploration as we seek to uh, get some answers from the scriptures. But to the first point or the truth that I want us to dig into is that God knows. Our God does not deal with us in a kind of a trial and error basis. He is not like that lady who was you know, uh, in my story that I've just given, was trying to guess what would work out for me. I don't know what she, had, she would have done, but God does not play guesswork on us. When the Bible says that God knows, it means exactly that. He knows. So when it comes to prayer, I believe that it is very important for us to understand this one of the attributes of God, that God is an all-knowing God. Because it will help us in our prayer. Now, in, in my speech, I, I think I have also realized that I like using the word I think most of the times. If you've talked to me, uh, you realize that I really, I like a lot of thinking. Even when I'm not thinking, but I think. And at some point, my wife told me, you always have answers for every question. I ask you this and you tell me, I think, you know, we are, we are passing by the road and there's a, a car that has broken down and she asks, hey, and I tell her, I think, you know, and I give her the answer. And you know, and she told me, and I always tell her, you know, you can't pin me down even when I give you a wrong answer. Because I never tell you that I know. I always tell you, I think. So I always want to have an answer for you. But the truth of the matter is that our God it's not like me who thinks. He doesn't think. I think uh, when James is behaving like this, then he has this problem. He knows. He has the knowledge. Now, this is what in theology or in uh, whatever Christian circles we refer to as the omniscience of God. So, when we say that God is an omniscient God, then we mean that he is all-knowing. There is nothing that he does not know. He has all-knowledge. 
and he has all wisdom at all times. That is our God. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, if you read the book of First John chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, but especially verse number 20, the Bible says, First John chapter 3, verse 20, God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. So God possesses perfect knowledge. He has perfect knowledge of himself, and he has perfect knowledge of all things, including you and me. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 13. Hebrews 4, 13, it says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So nothing catches God by surprise. Not even our prayers. By the way, even when we sin against God, he is never surprised. And God is surprised. Ah, yeah. So you sinned. I didn't see that coming. No, no, no. He knows. In fact, on Friday, we were learning with the, with, with the, the youth who were at the joint. And one of the, the most important lessons that we learned is that God orchestrates and plans and designs every single thing and every single detail of our lives. So nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing happens in our lives as an accident that God fails to understand and he wonders, how did that just happen? No, no, no. no. God is all-knowing. So he never learns. God never goes to school or he never sits and, and try to read books to learn what is happening or what ought to happen. He never discovers. And God discovered that uh, I am struggling with this. He never discovers. He knows it. God never forgets. Now, have you ever thought or even felt at some point in your life that God has forgotten about you? Or maybe your prayer life or your family. Because you th see things happening. You have prayed. You have trusted God. You have called on God. You have fasted. But nothing is happening. And you feel God must have forgotten. God must be... Maybe he's thinking about other things, but he's forgotten about me. He never forgets. And God also never ponders. You will never find God sitting somewhere and he's, he's thinking, what should I do about this situation? You know, Press Chapel is just celebrating 11. I don't know. God never ponders because he already has everything designed. He's never surprised or even amazed. You can't pull a surprise on God, like birthday surprises that we pull on each other. You know, you can't come up with a song and say, today you want to surprise God with this new song. In fact, it's the one who gives you the song. Now, the humbling yet terrifying and glorious truth is this, that God knows each one of us completely. That is, it is a humbling, it is a terrifying, and yet it is a glorious truth that God knows each and every one of us completely, inside out. Now, when you read the book of Psalm 139, from verse number one, this is what the psalmist says from English Standard Version. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know, when I sit down and when I rise up, you know, you design my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, oh Lord, you, will, you know it altogether. Can you imagine? He continues to say that you hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. For you formed my inward parts, verse number 13. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of them. That's how much God knows us. A writer by the name A.W. Tozer said this. 
that God knows each person through and through can be a cause of shaking fear to the man that has something to hide. Some unforsaken sin, some secret crime committed against man or God. But to us who have fled from refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us in the gospel, how unutterably sweet is the knowledge that our heavenly father knows us completely. No tell bearer like that, uh, my sister, can inform on us. No enemy can make an accusation stick. No forgotten skeleton can come tumbling out of some hidden closet to abash us and expose our past. No unsuspected weakness in our characters can come to light to turn God away from us. Since he knew us utterly before we knew him and called us to himself in the full knowledge of everything that was against us. Praise the Lord. Paul says in Romans chapter 11 and verse 33, and he, he's amazed at the depths of the knowledge of God. He says, oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. So the truth is, God knows us completely. There is nothing that catches him by surprise. It, even in what, whatever situation that you're going through, God understands, he feels, he knows. Now the question is, now how does this knowledge of God affect our prayer life? Should we just sit back and relax because God knows everything? Should we just do nothing? Why bother to pray if God already knows everything? Now every time I leave the house, of course I leave very early in the morning, but every time I leave the house when my son is awake, he always asks me to bring him something. And whenever I ask, I ask him what to bring him, he tells me, nilete vitu zangu. So it is upon me to figure out what vitu zake means. So my son Ifra knows or understands that I know what he needs. And I know what is best for him for that matter. However, he still asks me for the same. Every time he sees me leave, he tells me, Daddy Nilete Vitu Zangu. And when I come back home in the evening, he doesn't just sit and look at me and, and, and think I will remember and pick it up from wherever I, 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 I place it and give it to him. He asks, have you brought me my things? So if I have not brought, I will explain myself. Now, friends, we have a heavenly father who is not as limited as James as an earthly father. We have a heavenly father who knows everything that we need. He is not as limited as I am. The Bible says that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think. What a huge privilege that we have. That we have a heavenly father. He who created the heavens and the earth. And he knows us completely. Even the smallest details of our lives. Even the thoughts before they come to our mind. God already sees them. He says before a word is on your tongue. Before you even open your mouth to speak, he already knows it. That is the greatest privilege that we have as children of God. Someone once sang and said, what a, a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege to carry all our needs to prayer or in prayer. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. So why pray if God knows? Number one, prayer is an expression of our need for God. Prayer is an expression for our need, of our need for God. Prayer is an expression of our need for God. We know that prayer is simply a conversation with God. It is a way that God has given to us to communicate with him. He has given us an opportunity to communicate back to him in prayer. So prayer in itself is a privilege. However much difficult and hard it is, it is a privilege. 
Now, let me ask us this question. How many of us here, we know that in, the, in Kenya we have had uh, four presidents. We now have the fourth president who is in office. And how many of us, by a show of hands, it's not bragging, it's not being proud, it is just acknowledging what God has done. How many of us have ever met with any of the four presidents one-on-one, -on -one, by a show of hands? Wow. Wonderful. It's around 20 or 30%. So it is around that percentage, as in we are less. But how many people would desire to meet the, the president, including me? Okay. The rest of us are decided. Um, they, are, they, they, they desire in their heart. So they've raised their hands in their heart. But what I'm saying is this. If you get an opportunity to meet with the most powerful man in this land, and that is the president of this land, not under the, the glaring of the media people where they have to listen to what you want to say, what is the next thing that you want to say. When you, you get to him and you are just the two of you, one on one, and he tells you now, uh, tell me what you, what you need. That can be a great privilege. You know, that's something that any one of us would look, look forward to. Because you know, when you leave the, pres the presence of the president, your life can never remain the same again. And when you're given now an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one with him without, you know, under, you know, under closed, I mean, behind closed doors. That you can tell him anything, anything. Yani, tell him anything. Share with him anything. Hata kama ni secret. Hata kama ni wale ambao wanaku nyanyasa kule kazini. Tell him. That is a privilege. You know, you can, you can never leave his presence the same way you came in. Even if you didn't get something tangible. But inside of you, you know, you, you even want to show those wale soja wanakanga kwa get. Yani, wana nimetoka kwa president. Nimetoka kwa president. Should know people. All right? And friends, we have one of the greatest privileges on earth to have God as our heavenly father. And he invites us to come to him. Not as a group. It's good to come corporately as we are. We've come this morning. But God desires that we come personally, not even with your wife or your husband or your son or daughter. Come as you are, an individual, behind closed doors and tell him one-on-one. -on -one. You know, we are talking about God who is the, the creator of heaven and earth. We are talking about this all-powerful God who by the word of his mouth can turn your situation or your life around. That is the God that we have as our heavenly father. I want you to see how much privilege we have as children of God to have prayer as a channel that we can access the presence of God. Because the Bible says that when Jesus died on the cross, the curtain that was separating us from the Holy of Holies was torn into two. And all of us, each one of us, both big and small, huge, large, I mean, tall and, and dark, and, and we have access to the presence of the living God. And we can go and spend time with him. What a privilege. So now let me... You know, prayerlessness, when we pray, we tell God we need you. We tell God how much we desire him, how much we can do without him. Now, the opposite is true. When we don't pray, we are telling God, we, do, we, do, we don't need you, God. Prayerlessness is communicating to God that I have nothing to do with you. I can do all things through myself who gives me strength. So, prayerlessness, in its simplest definition, is pride. It's a way of telling God, I don't need you. I can do all things. I know how to make it through. I know the doors that I need to knock. 
I know the, 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 the places that I can go through to be able to help myself. So if pride is sin, then prayerlessness is sin. So when you go through all the day without spending time with God and just calling upon God or just whispering a prayer to God, you are telling God, I don't need you, God. I am a proud man. I am a proud woman. I don't need you. I, I can make it on my own. That is exactly what God reads when we don't pray. And you know how God deals with the proud people? The Bible says he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. We are all in need. All of us here are a bunch of sinners who need a savior. That alone should push us and, and, and take us to our knees because we need God every hour. We need God every day. We need God every single moment. We cannot do without him. The Bible says that everything that we have, we have received from him. 1 Corinthians 4, 7. Paul says, for who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? In other words, when we don't pray, we are boasting and we are telling God, even the things that we have belong to us. We did not receive them from you. And Paul is saying, why do you behave? Why do you boast? Why do you walk? Why do you live your life as if you have everything that you have, you did not receive from God? Psalm 24 and verse number 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. We all belong to him. The air that we breathe. The, 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 the grace to be able to wake up. You know, the, the, the strength to wake up and do the things that we are doing. It all belongs to God. And for that reason, we need God like nothing else. Acts 17, 28, the Bible says, In him, in Christ, we live in him, we move in him, we have our being. So the ability to do all that we are able to do and accomplish comes from God. Without him, we can do totally nothing. So whenever we pray, we are telling God, we are desperate for you. We are in desperate need of you, oh God. Now look at the Lord's Prayer that we just read in Matthew chapter 6 and verse, from verse number 9. This prayer that Jesus Christ taught the, the, the disciples is full of requests and pleading with God for needs that need to be met. In verse number 11 it says, give us this day, give us. Verse number 12, forgive us our debts. Verse number 13, lead us not into temptation, that's part B, uh, part A of the same. And part B says, deliver us from the evil one. In other words, we are in desperate need of God. If Every single time, every single hour, we are in need of God. Prayer is therefore an expression of our desperate need for God. We need God. I sing a song and say, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. I need thee. Oh, most gracious Lord. I am desperate in need. Desperately in need of you. So why do we pray? Yet God knows prayer is an expression of our desperate need for God. Secondly, prayer is a way of communion with God. So prayer is a way of enjoying intimacy with God. Let me give the same example that I gave concerning my, my son Ephraim. As a father, I love him. And one of the things that I enjoy as a father is when I get home and he runs and greets me, not just to receive Vituzake, but to spend time with me. I know he has a thousand and one questions that some of which I don't even understand and I have no answers for. But I don't mind answering them and listening to them so long as that will be a way of us spending time and just getting to know what he has interacted with in the course of the day. But I feel misused when I come home and he picks whatever Vituzake, what he's calling Vituzake and disappears. Or he picks my phone and he, you know, he takes the game and he's, he's busy playing the game because he's getting whatever he wants. 
when he's tired, he places the phone there and he's looking for something else. I feel misused. I feel bad. But one of the moments I cherish as a father is when we have one-on-one -on -one with him. It's heavenly. It is refreshing. And I believe that that's the way God desires for us. God desires intimacy with him. God wants us in his presence. He wants to have us. He wants to spend time with us. He wants to get to know what have you gone through. Not that he doesn't know, but he wants he want you to express to him what you have gone through, your frustrations in life. And that can only happen when we spend time with him in prayer. And sometimes God allows us to go through stuff, difficult things in life because he is seeking our attention. Sometimes God allows us to go through pain. And someone once said that pain is what sometimes God uses to attract our attention because sometimes we can get busy with things in life. But pain will put us down. My prayer is that we will not wait for pain to come or for troubles to come, for challenges to come, so that we can spend time with God in prayer. So if you're here and you're always going through problems every day of the week, I'm not saying that this is the, the only reason, but maybe you need to check how your prayer life is. Maybe God is calling your attention. Not always though, but the point is, God always values our time together with him. He values it. So if God already knows, why pray? The answer is intimacy. God desires it from us. Now I've interacted with people, talked with people who, they tell you, Pastor, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, things are not just working for me. I'm trying everything and nothing seems to work. I get, I get good money, make good money. But I just can't enjoy the money. I tithe. I serve in church. I'm almost found in every ministry. I am busy serving the Lord. Why is God allowing me to go through all this? Maybe he's calling your attention. A story, not really a story, but the, the Bible in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse number 38, because of time I won't read, but just paraphrase, we know the story of Mary and Martha. The, 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 the sisters to Lazarus and one day Jesus goes to, to, uh, to their home and we are told that Martha was busy serving, she was in the kitchen and, and putting these things together and serving juice and, and serving water and, and asking Jesus can I wash your feet and she was doing almost everything but Mary was seated at the feet of Jesus until it came to a point when Martha had to complain and she said Jesus, don't you care? I am the one who is busy doing everything. I'm tired. Why don't you ask Mary to come and assist me? And you know the answer that Jesus gave? Jesus told Martha. In verse number, I think verse number 40 or 41. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which not be taken away from her. So Mary was at the feet of Jesus, enjoying intimacy with Jesus, a time with Jesus, while Martha was all over doing everything because she felt that it was important to serve. But, she, but Jesus tells her, it is Mary who has chosen the good portion and it will not be taken away from her. Mark chapter 3 verse 13. Mark chapter 3 verse 13. He says, and he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him. This was Jesus. And he appointed the twelve whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. Now look at this. In verse number 14, 13, 15, he says, he appointed twelve. Verse number 14. He appointed twelve, designating them apostles. And why was, why did Jesus appoint the twelve? He said that they might be with him. That was the first reason. That they might spend time with him. That they may enjoy intimacy with him. Jesus was not so much concerned about what they were going to do before they became what he wanted them to be. 
So he says, he's appointed 12 and called them apostles. And of course, apostles means those who are supposed to, they're sent out. They were sent out. People who are sent to go and do the work of God. But they were given that name. But before they are sent out, Jesus wanted them to be with him. So Jesus values our being with him more than our doing for him. Because many a times we feel, ah, yes, what a scare of the buyer come as the church. I mean, at a scare of the buyer come as the fanya ivi. And a scare of the buyer sana come a hauja kanae. Kwa maombi, kuskia neno lake. More than an a scare of the buyer usipoenda kanisani. Does that make sense? So Jesus, or God himself, values our time together with him. As much as he values what we do for him, he values our time with him. In fact, this preaching that I'm doing here is not as important to God as the time that I spent preparing this sermon and listening from him and, and allowing the sermon to minister to me. Praise the name of Jesus. So the point is, God values my service to him, what I do for him, yes, but he also values the time that I spend with him to know him. More than what God wants, uh, more than God wants to do things for me, he wants to do things in me. It's during the time of intimacy that we get to know God. We hear him more clearly as we spend time with him, not to receive something, but to grow in our fellowship with him. Now, do you have this kind of friends or family members who only calls you when tragedy tracks or strikes? When you see their call before you receive, you must ask yourself, Sasa nani amekufa? There's this funny thing that was going around about married couples and they were saying that a lady left with the, the husband's car and as she was driving, she just felt to stop and send a good text to the husband. You know, honey, I love you. You know, I'm, I'm so great that you are my husband. And, and you know, the, the guy read that SMS and said, Wait, wait. Sema du kweli. Umegonga mtu ama umefanya nini na yogari? Because the, the guy is not, is not used to those kind of messages. And you are either he wants to be I'm twisted, something wrong has happened. And there are friends in our lives, by the way, when you see their call, it's either beri kuna mchango, ama kuna um, uh, maafa mahali. Some, yani something that needs you or needs your resources. And sometimes we behave with God like that. When God sings our call, you know, we never call God to just tell him, Lord, you know, I'm so grateful that you are my father. I'm just grateful that I've woken up. We sometimes wake up in the morning and to me, I'm kind of stressed. And you've woken up in the morning. You know, I pray that we are not going to be those kind of people that when God sees our call, he's wondering, now, this son of mine, ile stress ya kazini ya hijaisha, you know, and when God sees our call, he's excited because he knows he just, we just want to spend time with him. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible records many instances when Jesus Christ went to the mountaintop alone in a secret place to pray. I believe that Jesus was not going to pray just because he needed something. After all, he was the son of God. He was God himself. He's this all-knowing, all-powerful God. He has everything. I mean, he can call heaven and everything comes at, at just by a call because he's the son of God. But he spent time every morning, or most of the mornings, and every time he spent quality time with his, his father. It is because he valued intimacy with his father. If Jesus was the son of God could do this, then it means that we should do it even more often. So the primary point of prayer is not to get something. The primary point of prayer is to know someone. And it is to grow in our knowledge of God. And that's why Jesus is saying in chapter 6 and verse number 6 of Matthew. He says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. And he promises, 
that he who sees what is done in secret will reward you. In other words, there is a reward. When we spend time with God, there is a reward. And when we spend time in secret place, a time of intimacy with God. Now, based on the teachings of Jesus Christ from this passage of scripture that we have read, I can boldly say this morning that the most and the greatest, the greatest and the most important thing in this world is not your family. The most important thing in this world is not your husband or your wife or your kids. It is not even your job. Neither is it your finances. It's not your health. None of these things is important. The most important thing in the world is your personal intimacy with God. Because everything about your life is affected by your intimacy with God. When I'm intimate with God, my marriage will work. When I'm intimate with God, everything in my life will fall in place. Because God is able to put my, my life in order when I am intimate with him. Your job, your family, your health, your future, your finances, your children, everything, all is dependent on our personal intimacy with God. So this morning I want to challenge you, if you've not designated a place, if you don't have uh, that habit of spending time with God and getting to know him and getting to hear from him, it is a privilege that you better begin today. Don't allow the issues of life and the business of life eat up that privilege. It's a privilege that God has given to us as children of God to spend time with him. Everything in your life is affected by your intimacy with God. Now, as I conclude, I want to say this. You might be here this morning and you are feeling all alone. Maybe there is a situation that you're going through and you feel like, God has no idea what you're passing through. He even seems to be less caring. You might even find yourself like this, the disciples of Jesus Christ in the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 38 when they were crossing over the sea and there was a storm and Jesus was asleep at this time. And one of the disciples shouted to Jesus and told him, Master, don't you care if we drown? In other words, he was telling Jesus, don't even care that we, we are almost drowning. You are just there. But Jesus knew. Jesus knew. And sometimes we get to moments in life when we feel God doesn't care. I am drowning, but God is just, is just there. I mean, he's not even caring. I have prayed for this prayer. He's not answering. He doesn't care. He doesn't even know. It might feel like that. It might seem as if things are catching God by surprise. It may seem that things are happening in your life and God is not aware. I have come with some good news today. God, who is your father, he knows. He knows what you're going through. He understands what you're passing through. He knows every single detail of your life. Be encouraged. Jehovah knows and Jehovah sees and he cares. Secondly, God desires that we pray to him. Not just to receive the needs, but to grow in intimacy with him. But again, we also need to pray because we need God every single hour. We have needs that only God can meet. Someone once said that the greatest tragedy of life is not an answered prayer. The greatest tragedy of life is an offered prayer prayer. Prayer that was not prayed or was not offered to God. God wants us to enjoy him, everything in him. Because the Bible says that in the presence of God there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures for us to enjoy. God desires that we enjoy him. And as we do that we get to know him deeper and better. The only way to grow in intimacy with God is to pay, spend quality and interrupted time with him. Now, when you're la in love with someone, it's not a question of how long should I spend time with this person. 
it is your intimacy, the level of your intimacy that will determine how, how much time you need to spend together. So when it comes to prayer, when it comes to spending time with God, the issue of how long should a, a Christian pray? Is it 10 minutes? Is it 15 minutes? Is it in the morning? Is it in the, during the day? Is it in the evening? That should, not be the, that should not be the main question. The main question should be, am I intimate with God? Because if you have intimacy with God, you will not struggle to spend time with him. You don't struggle to spend a whole day in his presence. If you have somebody that you love, you want to listen to them. You want to just see their face. You want to, you know, just hear them speak. You just want to spend every minute with them. And that is the same way with our God. So we'll not be asking, how long should that take? And I want to encourage you this morning. Maybe you are just starting off with your prayer life. I want to encourage you to do that much often. Or maybe you are a prayer warrior. I want to encourage you to pray even more. Because some of us, five minutes in the presence of God can be like one day. And I want to encourage you, begin from five minutes. This coming week, make sure that you spend quality time with the Father. And it must be intentional. It must be time that is planned. You don't just say, ah, I wake up in the morning, you know, I will see if I can get some time in the course of the day to spend. No, no, not getting time. It is creating time to be in the presence of the living God. You might be in your car, you're driving in the jam and you're speaking to God. You can be in the midst of the crowd. But you are communing with God. It is possible. I want to encourage us, friends, because this is a privilege that none of us should, not, should miss out. It's a privilege that God has given to us. We can all enjoy that privilege. So I want to challenge us that as this week begins, let us begin from somewhere. But if, if it is your way of life, I want to encourage us. Let's continue doing this more and more because God desires that we spend time with him and enjoy the intimacy with him. Don't let this privilege pass you by. Let's rise up on our feet as we come to a close. Now there's a song that we sang, the second song that we sang in the list today that says that take me to the place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. Where I can be with you. It's a time of, you know, a place where there is, you can enjoy intimacy with God. And God desires that for each and every one of us in this room today. So I want to pray for, for us. And if you are here and you look at your intimacy with God and you realize it is one thing, you know, I need to spend more time with God. I need to, you know, I need to increase my time with God. I need more of that time to enjoy the presence of God. Maybe you look at your prayer life and it's like, it's like a business kind of casual exchange where you go before God, you give him a list and you tell him, God, that's, that's my list. So please do what you're doing. I am, I am, I am, I am out. I'm going to work. Or sometimes you just pass by and you knock at his door and you tell him, God, Nivile to time, sina lakini, I would have loved to spend time in your presence, lakini, wacha niende kazini tutaunana jioni. I don't think whether God desires that we have that kind of relationship. God desires that we, we even in our busy schedules, that we are able to, to slow down and get to connect with him. So I want, to, I want us to pray and if you're here and you sincerely desire that God will help you to grow in your prayer life, in your intimacy with God, I want you to shoot up your hand. I will sit and then I'll pray together with you. You desire intimacy with God. You desire that discipline to be able to spend more time in his presence, to, to spend more time with him. You desire that you will be, you know, you will be uh, very sensitive about his presence. Even if you are, you know, up there in the, in the aeroplane and you're, you're flying, but you are very you're very sensitive to the presence of God and you know, God is right here. I can spend time with him in, in, in prayer. So just lift up your hand high. I will sit and I'll pray together with you and God will 
give you the grace to be able to spend more time with him, to be able to, you know, seek him more because that is his desire. Father, we thank you this morning. As I look around this room, Lord, I can see hands that are raised up. But you, O oh God, who is all-knowing and all-powerful and omniscient God, you see hearts. You even know the, the, the steps that we have taken, the things that we have tried before as the year begins and we, we are psyched up to pray. We are psyched up to spend more time with you, but it gets to a point around February, around March there, and that zeal and that passion is just dead and gone. It's consumed by the, the, the things in our lives that, that speed up things in our lives, that the speed that we have to... But Lord, this morning we are here. By responding to this prayer, we desire, Lord, an intimacy with you. We don't just desire to come to give you a list of things and we don't even know when it was answered because we don't even take note of what you do. Lord, we just come and throw them at you and we are off and I'll pray, Lord, that that will change. Our lives will be, will be a life that is designed to, be, to have intimacy with you, oh God. I pray, Father, that you see every heart this morning because you know at what point we are in our intimacy with you, O oh God. I pray, King of glory, that you may help us as a church family and as the body of Christ, that irrespective of how busy life can be, irrespective of how pressure, how much pressure we have, Lord, we will desire to spend time, quality, and interrupted time with you in whatever place that we will be. Lord, may you help us in that area. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I know that all over this room, Lord, there are people who have already decided in their minds that as this week begins, I will desire to spend more time with God. I will, I will spare a few minutes even. And I get to my office and the first few minutes I will spend just, just communing with you. I pray that, Lord, may nothing steal that time from them. May nothing come, oh God, to derail them from that desire. Because there's so much that we miss out, Lord, when we are busy doing things and we fail to spend time with you. Lord, may this privilege be our portion in the name of Jesus. We bless you because you've heard us. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, before I, I, I come down, you might be here and you are not born again. We want to give you an opportunity to be able to um, allow Jesus Christ, because communion, that intimacy begins at that point of, of salvation. You can't, you know, enjoy this privilege that we have as believers unless you are born again. So if you're here and you're not born again, or maybe you have drifted back and you'd want us to pray that God will renew that relationship and that fellowship with him. Just lift up your hand. I will see it and I will pray together with you. God will come into your life and, and, and wrap you in his arms again and that you may sense his presence. Anyone who desires that you may be able to pray together with them. Glory to God. Amen. So since there is none, I want to bless God for each and every one of us. And I want to encourage you, friends, just begin from somewhere. Begin from somewhere. Because God desires that. And He will give you the grace. He will give you the strength to be able to uh, sing that song. That, Lord, wrap me in your arms this morning that I may sense your presence. Take me to the place where, you know, that secret place where I can be with you and spend time with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to... Um, I know the choir would want to sing that song once. Wrap me in your arms. Can we do that one more time? And then we, we will come to a close.
that you take us to that secret place every single day especially as we begin this week oh god that secret place where we can just be with you one-on-one -on -one and just get to know your heart and feel your heartbeat and grow in our knowledge of you that our lives will never be the same again in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen i'll give you the priestly blessing thank you go ahead and just clap and appreciate the lord amen and amen that you're going to have a great and awesome week this um, this coming week and that the Lord is going to go with us um, in everything that we will do. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to come here. We appreciate and value your time and value your presence part of this family. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. I want to invite uh, Brother Kirimi to now release us. Thank you. Let's give the hand. Thank you, Pastor James, for allowing the Lord to use you. We have been blessed and you have challenged us to rise up and speak to our Father at every moment that we are able to capture. Bona sefiwe. Are we going to speak to our Father? Yes. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, let's have a seat. Um, we would like now to give the first opportunity to our visitors to rise up. Do we have visitors this morning? Can I see by the raising of your hand? Visitors, we hand some visitors. I can see, please rise up, do whatever you came with. Uh, there is protocol team at the exit. Please uh, follow them. They'll take you aside. We are going to take a few of your minutes. Then we are going to share notes briefly and then we are going to release you. Tunapenda wageni? Tuapatia mkono wakati wanaenda. Asante ni sana. Tumesema asante. Na tunawomba pia nini musimame tuweze kusema neema ya mungu ili tuweze kuondoka. Let's stand up and share the ones of grace. Can we shake hands as we share the ones of grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Mungu wabariki na muende salama. Asante. Let's praise him again. Mungu ni chefu, chefu wa taifa yote. Mungu ni chefu, chefu wa taifa yote. Mungu ni chefu, chefu wa taifa yote. Mungu ni chefu, chefu Thank you. 